Katie. This is Marcy Frumker from the International Women's Air and Space Museum in Cleveland, Ohio. I'd like yes. to say welcome back to Earth. Well, thank you. And Marcy, we've met, haven't we? I think we know each other. Uh, we actually haven't met. Uh, I came on board with the museum uh, after it had moved to Cleveland. I don't think you've been to our museum in Cleveland yet. You were there in Centerville. I know you were a volunteer. Right. And uh, that was kind of one of my questions I wanted to ask about. Um, I know that uh, Joan Rubeck from our museum, who's since passed away, unfortunately, I know. Uh, kind of encouraged you to be an astronaut. I wonder if you can uh, give me a little fill-in on the background on that story. Well, you know, the, the Women's Air and Space Museum, when it was there in uh, Centerville, Ohio, it was right down the road from where I uh, lived and worked, and, and it was just marvelous to go to any meeting because there were just these fascinating women that would walk in the room and, you know, you'd, they'd, they'd have these wild backgrounds, and here you got to talk to them and, and find out that, you know, they were regular people who just, you know, had big dreams and made them happen and certainly for somebody like me who felt just like that you know I'm an Air Force officer you know and a lot of us would like to go to space and and you never think you're going to be one of the ones that get gets to be picked to, to go and just being with those women going to meetings understanding how they overcame some things that were hard and 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 how they you know, did their jobs well and were such an exciting part of women's aviation history, both present and past, was very inspirational to me. And do you remember, recall them encouraging you to, like, apply for the astronaut program? Absolutely. You know, and, you know, there should have been a bunch of different signatures on that, on that application in that, um, you know, they just, they, they did everything they could to, you know, between coaching and encouraging. Um, you know, I felt like they, they were applying as well, and when I got accepted, I, I felt like, you know, we were all accepted. It was, it was something really special to get to do and something special to, it's so special to be selected, I think, for the astronaut corps. But nobody does it alone, and certainly I, I felt like the, the women at the Air and Space Museum were behind me, and, and I loved the fact that we did it together. Excellent. And uh, now that uh, Endeavor is going to be returning home shortly and we only have one more shuttle flight to go, one more woman on that flight, uh, what do you think in terms of the space shuttle's legacy for women astronauts in space, especially U.S. women astronauts since the bulk of U.S. women have flown on the space shuttle? Well, you know, I guess I'm, I'm thinking of it in, in more of a glass half full as opposed to a glass half empty. I don't think about you know, the last woman, Sandy Magnus, to fly on the space shuttle. I mean, I just think that, you know, more and more women are incorporated in every way, you know, in the space program. And, you know, on the ground, we've got a really big mission on the ground. I mean, you see us as astronauts, you know, on the space shuttle or living on the space station, but there's an immense ground team that makes that happen. And it's a whole life experience. And the work that we do up there, I think, is really, really important. But it doesn't happen just because we, whether men or women, go up there and figure out things to do, there is a big plan that happens here on the ground from all over the world. And that team is made up of men and women. And I think that women bring some unique talents to a team in terms of how we manage a team, um, what kinds of things that we include in the plan, how we manage communication, that maybe in a stereotypical way it can be different but essential to a, a real life uh, mission that encompasses every minute of, of every day. And so, you know, I don't really think about just that, you know, Sandy will be the last, in fact it never occurred to me, well, she'll be the last woman. She's just part of the team that is making, you know, that last shuttle mission happen. And that last shuttle mission is part of the future. I mean, the future is to look to new things, and the fact that women have been part of the space program in so many ways already, um, it's just a given that the women and their talents are part of the, the future of space exploration as well. And uh, pre-launch, uh, when you were getting ready to launch on your Soyuz rocket, you met up and took pictures with the first woman in space, Valentina Tereshkova. I was wondering how did that come together, and what was that like? I... I was so pleased to be able to meet with her. I'd actually met with her briefly, you know, before, but there's nothing like when you're really, really, really going to go live in space to talk to somebody who's been before and somebody who was such a part of history. And, you know, 
I mean, she's a, she's a smart lady with a lot of different life experiences, one of which was going to space. And I, I found it was a similar conversation, even though it was in Russian, to conversations that I have with other women who have done difficult and challenging things in fields where they, there were maybe not uh, many women. And that there are some things that are unique about being a woman in a stereotypically man's world. And it just means we have to, you know, stand tall, bring the gifts that we bring. Sometimes they're appreciated, sometimes they're not, but they're they're essential to, you know, a team that, that is, is um, I don't know, weaving the path of the future. And uh, when you were becoming interested in being an astronaut, um, I read in your bio that you started, started when you met Sally Ride while you were in college. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could uh, tell me about that experience and do you feel that you are encouraging other young girls uh, to become interested in becoming an astronaut or becoming involved with the space program in some manner? I, I think that for girls, you know, growing up is still different than for boys. And some of that is good and some of that is something that we can improve on. You know, I think that there are still some stereotypes out there that get communicated to young girls that, that say to them, you might not be able to do that as well or it's not as likely that you would be would do such a thing you know as be an astronaut or you know something that to them is their dream job and so when they meet somebody who does something that they are fascinated with but maybe don't feel like it's something they could do and that person becomes real to them I think it makes those dreams become something that they could work for and achieve and I think that by you know, being an astronaut and be, being a public figure, seeing my face on, on TV or on, in some educational NASA film, there are some young girls that look at that, look at that and go, well, you know, if she can do that, I can do that too. Not just to be an astronaut, but if she could do something that people think is so amazing and only special people get picked for, well, maybe I can do something that to me is amazing and is my dream job. And I know that worked that way for, for myself when I met Sally Ride. I mean, she doesn't remember that meeting, and I do, and we've talked about that because she met a lot of people, but she, she does certainly understand what a difference that she has made and continues to make in, in the lives of kids and, and adults. And for me to walk in her footsteps is a great privilege. And uh, your shuttle flights versus the ISS flight, uh, can you describe the differences in terms of the pace and the science, the actual training, the adjustment to living in space on both? Well, the shuttle flights are, are short, and at the same time, I will tell you that I felt like I was on a six-month sprint um, up there on the space station, mostly because it's an amazing platform that we have built to do research that affects both our ability to, to go further out into the universe and do that safely with people and understand what kind of vehicles we need, what kind of recycling system, how people need to live, but also it, there's, there's science and engineering that affect us right back here on Earth. Understanding osteoporosis, it's a great platform for understanding that, understanding um, the way liquids and solids behave. And the way those things behave affects everything that we manufacture down here, affects you know, pollution, oil recovery, combustion, learning more about these basic sciences up there in a way we can't learn about them down here brings lessons back home. And being able to be up there for a long time and make a difference over a longer period of time was a great privilege. And I, I, my, my family maybe hates to hear it, but I just really wasn't actually ready to come home yet. Okay. It's a special place and I wanted to stay. And, and, and yet, you know, I was just pleased to have my turn up there to try to make a difference. Thank you for your time, and maybe you could visit us in Cleveland sometime. You know, I'm going to say I would love to, and I, I really appreciate your organization and, and just the things that you do for outreach I think are marvelous and effective and necessary, and I thank you for do th doing them. Thanks a lot.